Ciao ragazzi! Ciao! So today we're gonna answer your questions. So what is the question number one that Morgan most asked? A big question that people were asking is are we gonna have the baby, if everything goes well, in Italy or are we gonna stay closer to our current home? Well, so technically it's much easier to have it here in the United States. Yes. Why Amore? Well, because we have all these appointments that we have to do throughout the pregnancy and it would be like we would have to move to Italy. We need to move for there. the duration of the pregnancy and having the baby. Yes. For the appointments and for the, if the baby were to come early. So it's, I just don't think that makes sense. Yeah, it's not practical to take the airplane to go back and visit. And Plus with Misha. Her life right now, it is in the United States. So we decided to go IVF there because was cheaper and then actually was more nice uh, environment and then we was thinking yeah okay, that was a great thing but for the baby for delivery I think it, here it is the great uh, spot to do it because it's gonna be easy to go to the appointments yeah. and then more even profitable. though I am curious about how it would all that happen was in interesting <laughs> like, to see what is the difference I am actually you uh, make me sound like I don't know for the second one. Yeah, we'll see, maybe. Maybe one is gonna be American and one is gonna be Italian, so they're gonna fight each other. Say, I'm Italian, I'm American, I'm Italian too, I'm American too. They'll both have dual citizenship though. Yeah, but where you're born is gonna be American. It's gonna be American. He gonna eat macaroni and cheese. He's not gonna eat. They're all gonna eat macaroni and cheese. Yeah, they're Get gonna. Ready, they're the gonna craft go. is coming. They're gonna go fazolis. They're gonna eat macaroni and cheese. <laughs> and, uh, he, and then he's gonna be proud to say, I'm Italian, but he's gonna eat macaroni and cheese. That is gonna be. The perfect combination. <laughs> yes, perfect. On the same subject, people wanna know if we want, or if we're still moving to Italy. All right, this is a big question. <laughs> it's not an easy answer. It's not an easy answer. Actually, so we go back and forth so many times, right, Amore? Um, yes, <laughs> every day. Every day. <laughs> we like one thing in America and one thing in Italy. I wish can combine or to be so close, like for uh, airplane-wise, it's a uh, really long travel. Yes. Plus, Jesse, you know... Uh, of um, travel I'm to... I'm getting better though. You, she, she getting better. With she, travel anxiety. He's talking yeah. about airplane fear. Yeah, but you're going better, but... I'm getting better. But I think ultimately we just had to kind of put a list of what makes the most sense for where we are right now in this stage of life that we're in. And I think right now it just makes the most sense to stay in the U.S. That doesn't mean that we've totally stopped looking at houses in the U.S. Or sorry, in Italy. We're still looking around. You never know when that perfect place might pop up. And we haven't totally said that we won't move there in the future. Mm. But I think right now, especially with IVF, with the timing, because we were ready to move to Italy. Yeah. Like, we were ready. But then, with the timing of IVF, with my endometriosis, with surgery, we had to go, go, go. We've got to have the baby. We have to try now. The timeline just kind of got all shifted. Shifted. And now we have to try and make our family and it makes the most sense. It's stay. make more sense to the United States because uh, yes, moving in Italy, then with Mitcha and then everything else. And it was a step after step after step. So it was much better. We're doing the AVF in Italy, come back, raise the family here, and then maybe looking. But I like America. It's not okay. I hate America. Really? Just joking. I know you like America, but they might not know you like it. I mean... It, he just doesn't like Americanized Italian food. That's I it. just hate the Italians Americanized food. That's it. But I cooking all the time home. I don't go around eating in the restaurants. We don't mm -hmm. go. I always cook me the meal Saturday, Sunday. We do special stuff like that. I enjoy that. So... I mean, I miss Italy for that, and now I can think about it. I, know. I, I, I want to go eat nice. There's pizza. so much nice, so much like things, things lifestyle-wise that are nice in Italy. But I think our goal, since we aren't moving, is to try and bring more of that lifestyle for us. Like you said, always cooking at home, trying to find moments for just la dolce vita, yeah. dolce far niente. Just try to adopt that mentality more yeah. here. And we go back to her. I don't know, we did a video a long time ago. Our goal from the beginning 
always to do six months in Italy and six months in America. So it's like, like a house here, a house there, I go back and forth. Yeah, a so that house was there, a house here. our goal. So who knows if that's gonna come in the future. But right now, that's what happens in life. The plans always end up changing. Yeah. So it's better to just go with the flow. Oh, maybe when we retire. Yeah. Like when we are in the 50s or 60s, we say, okay, exactly. let's change. Yeah. Right now, though, we're here. We're here. Which and actually we're... they asked where we are because not everybody seems to know that we live in Tennessee. Yeah, we're in the south and, and, uh, and we love it. Yeah, that's where I was from, born. Yeah. And actually on the same thing, they had another question because they said, we got to see Alessio's family. Are we going to get to see your family? family? <laughs> Um, maybe. Maybe. I maybe. mean, it's not a problem to, to film it. This, no, I think um, they would be good to do it. In a fun the scenario, you yeah. know? Like, uh, what give you? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll try. We'll, we'll, we'll try. figure that out. We'll try. We'll try. <laughs> we'll, try. <laughs> we'll figure that out. I think, like, maybe, like, a family dinner or something. Easter's coming up. Oh yeah, we're gonna be here for Easter, so maybe we could show my family for Easter. Yeah, okay. We could do that. We'll yeah, we'll work on that. We'll work yeah. on that. Next question. Yeah. Do we have names picked out for our future little ones? No. No, I was gonna say yes. I have names in my mind. We're never gonna tell you guys. Ever. You're Ever. Never gonna know. Into you or the garden part because when you say it, then you don't like it anymore. No, we're not going to tell them the name, but we have names that we've talked about. Yeah, what? For the boy, we don't have it. It's really hard to find boy names that we both like. We have yeah. million girl names. Million girls' names, but for the boy, we have zero. So, it's so hard. So we're going to decide. Like I said name. in the last video or one video, Lesio Jr. It no. would be so cute. It would be so cute. He hates it. I hate it, Alessio Jr. <laughs> you want to be the one and only? No, not just for that. Alessio Jr., my but kid. You don't call it Alessio Jr., you call it Alessio. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ruin his life. I love your name. Yes, but Alessio, Alessio. If it was a girl, Alessia, maybe. Or Jesse. <gasps> Jesse O. Next question. How old are we? Wow. <laughs> so I am on my way to be 34 soon. Alessio is. How old are you? Hmm? 37? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you 37? <laughs> okay, I was like, wait. I'm 37. 37. He's 37. Um, I think we look pretty good for our age. I have some gray hairs. I got some gray hairs. They came. We are old guys. They started coming in as soon as I met Alessio, and then like <laughs> <laughs> they're there. But you know what? I think I say embrace it. I really don't care about aging. Mm. I'm actually happy to get older because I think it is a blessing. My goal is to grow old with you. Mm. I hope one day I can say, "Oh, I'm 84 years old." And then everybody knows that the man is. Uh... Uh, like a, a wine. <laughs> more you go, the more you All get. All right, there. Alessio Senior. <laughs> I really, yeah, I'm happy to grow old with you. Yeah. What are our travel plans for 2024? Do we have any trips planned? Well, we have one trip planned, and we're gonna be in New Orleans. We're gonna go taste all. The New Orleans food. I'm so glad to go back to New Orleans. Some people ask where we, we met. They might be new, new to Orleans. the channel. We met in New Orleans. It's going to be our first time back after moving to Nashville. Yeah. But you know what is crazy? I've been there and I pretty much don't try nothing. I try crawfish. Yes. I try because they cook in the... In the the boils. Cozy. Yeah. Yeah. Crawfish yeah, yeah. boil. And I try the uh, gambo. Yes. That was my favorite. Then, but I never ate alligator. There's so many things that he's never tried. I've tried almost everything. Well, we eat the, the cafe, sorry. The beignets. We, yeah. We do that. I put together a huge list of everything we're going to eat when we're there. I've had all of this. But mm. there's so many things that Alessio hasn't had. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm yeah. so excited. 
So we're gonna go back, we're gonna like see, revisit where we grew up, not grew up, <laughs> where our love grew yeah. up, <laughs> and then eat. Basically. Eat, yeah. Just go redoing how little. Then, because this year actually is gonna be 10 years together, actually anniversary, plus I'm 10 years coming to the United States. It's a big celebration. So actually, actually I go the, almost in the same time, it's yeah. crazy. We don't plan this, came just for a reason. But then I think about, oh, it's 10 years, actually I came to the United States. And... Um, so that's our big pl our trip plan. Yeah. Obviously the IVF. And the IVF get this, uh, uh, this uh, spring too. And then from there we need to see how the IVF going because if we start go up and down, up and down from Italy because if everything go wrong, it is hard. I was trying to put Texas in this year. And I try to put New York yeah. City in this year. <laughs> so my idea it is New Orleans, Texas, Italy, Texas, New York. But we don't know. We don't know. I, I believe that it's going to be New Orleans and then Definitely New Italy. Orleans that we're going to see after I Yeah. Yeah. If there was one thing you can bring back here from Italy, what would it be? I already know mine. Go ahead. Your family. Oh. If I could scoop them all up and bring them here, I would be really happy. Yeah, I would say it, but I don't think everybody wants to come here. Oh, well, they don't have a choice because I'm scooping <laughs> them every time here. <laughs> My mom definitely yeah. want to come here. We need to get her visiting over I here. I actually yeah. say that when I born, like, she want to come back here. <laughs> uh, oh. A good pizza. The Roman Colosseum. <laughs> I almost bring nothing. Oh, you're gonna leave Italy where it is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't always bring nothing. Yep. Nothing. Nothing. Not got... even like one little small thing to have your comforts here. Is there a comfort in Italy that you would want to bring here? I don't always bring nothing. I always leave it like that. That is the nice thing that you can okay. have. Okay. Yep. Have we changed our diet for the IVF process? Have we been cutting sugar or doing anything special? Actually, we did. Yes. For a time. We, yes. We did our diet. We we even went gluten free for two months. Two months. Because yes. we were trying to cut inflammation from yeah. my body. It didn't really do much, but the doctor said if we could go four to eight weeks gluten free, then maybe it would help. We did. And yeah, I mean, it was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Oh, it's I can super easily easy. do it again. Super easy. Like, I was thinking, oh my God, but we were eating pasta, we were eating everything like gluten free, then vegetables. Mm -hmm. It was pretty amazing. I like, uh, uh, changes the, the body, you know, it's hard to know uh, because I was feeling always energetic. Yeah, and I think too, like when you do big changes like that, you really have to do it for a long term. I, at least in my opinion, well, I know there's did. different. I you know, but like I think six months, then you oh. might know like a, a feel a difference. But yeah. the doctor said four weeks, eight weeks. So that's what we did, and yeah, we did that. I mean, we always try to cut sugar. Alessio, poor Alessio, with all of his eating videos lately, he's had to eat. The sugar, a but lot of sugar. <laughs> but we cut a lot of sugar because when we're baking, when we see the recipe, I always cut the sugar. We just cut the sugar, <laughs> like uh, especially if it has fruit in it. Yeah, like I'll make apple pies or cobblers, things that have fruit in it. I cut out the sugar in the recipe totally because I feel like it's already sweet enough. Yeah, with the then, fruit. I then know. maybe in the beginning you uh, oh, but then you go so used to. Cause then you don't feel anymore to have sugar. So, and without sugar, I, in my opinion, is much, much the better. The desserts, yeah. Much, the desserts, yeah. everything. Then... Uh, I don't know. We try to keep a pretty Mediterranean diet overall. Mm. Like we're always eating, like lately too, we've been eating a ton of vegetables, a lot of fiber, 
Um, we're trying to be really anti-inflammatory with the foods that we're eating. But then too, like we will eat dessert and things like that. Like we eat the dessert. I mean, and... I'm all about the balance. Yeah, we eat some desserts and homemade with without sugar. Yeah, yeah. Or, I like we like... we're always cooking at home, guys. We very rarely go out to restaurants. Really? Very rarely. Not even for like special occasions. Yeah. It's more special for us to cook a really nice dinner that we like here at the house. Yeah. So it's really rare. So, I mean, not really any like super big changes, just things that we try to do all the time. And then we are like, I am taking um, the prenatal vitamins, some other little supplements here and there just in preparation. But really the egg retrieval was where most of our preparation came from the egg retrieval yeah because that we were really trying to make sure my eggs were the best quality that they could be and yeah that we did a lot of diet we had did a lot of things mm -hmm. um what is our biggest fear associated with the ivf that's rough it's rough you know i'll be honest my biggest fear is not the failure of the ivf it is keeping our relationship strong during it. And I know we have a strong relationship. I just don't ever want us to get to the point where we're so mentally and emotionally exhausted by it all that it causes problems between us. Hmm. So that's why I always consciously work on it now. And that's why we have a really strong relationship. But I think like having something happen between us would be my biggest yeah. concern. Yeah. My biggest fear instead, <laughs> guys, this question make you need to think about it. Like, uh, it's a thought. It's a thought. It's a like, question. So my biggest fear, I guess, is not the feeling because I prepare to redo it. Maybe the fear can come if we losing the faith. Because if this go wrong and then we need to go back to redo it in a short time and then re go back to redo this uh, this kind of time mm -hmm. i worry get all this up and down up and down with this make us a little bit say okay let's wait and take time because you get burnout burnout because and more you wait and more this endometriosis come back fast so mm -hmm. the fear is to be burned out from the exhaustion to go so i try to prepare mentally example when i talk you with you guys i always said in the videos i'm prepared if this is gonna fail to redo it because if i prepare mentally then you will constantly okay i go like you're ready you don't ready. have to feel like you pick yourself back up you already know what you're gonna do yeah next that is i would i was working on it right now prevent then mm -hmm. obviously i won't go straight the first of course but try to to do that for not have that burnout. Yeah. Would you be comfortable sharing the name of your IVF clinic? Yes. So the clinic it is Instituto Bernabeu. And then now from your name it is Bernabeu. <laughs> yes. Heart clinic it is in Italy, but it's not Italian. Shocking. <laughs> yeah. So. What how, do you mean? What do you mean? So. Instituto Bernabeu, actually, when we was looking uh, the option to Italy, okay, no, option to IVF in Europe, mm -hmm. okay, how the best are Spain, Republica Checa, can you say? Czech Republic. Czech Republic and Greece. Greece. They stop three. No, was Italy in there? Poor okay. Italy. Yeah, <laughs> because in Italy, uh, the IVF start later because before we have uh, problems with the church like the church uh, the Vatican no want to do make do that and then they came at deals so Italy start to do IVF so Italy the best clinics Italian clinics you can find in Milan where are money okay and we're looking for that too it was Milan it actually was another in um, uh, Tuscany mm. okay other parts, they are not that advanced like Spain, all right? All Italians usually go in Spain, uh, but... Even uh, some people ask, oh, why did you go in Spain? A lot of people <laughs> ask us, why you don't go in Spain? All right, Italians, oh, you go in Spain? No, uh, in Italy, in Italy. 
Yeah, because we are 10 years behind, not behind, but I just say it's not all country make it. It is for free there, but mm -hmm. we said Jesse was supposed to be citizen there for six months before do that. And we don't have this time. So what happened? When Jesse was searching, she searched and she found uh, that they open a Spanish uh, clinic. Instituto, clinic in Italy. It was in Venice, an hour from where I'm from. So I said, oh my God, this is cool. <laughs> this is cool. So the, the people that are working there are Italians, but these people was working in Spain. Okay, uh, the doctors was mm -hmm. working in Spain. Plus, there are even Italians working in Italy because, yes, they have, like, you can say, wow, well, you just say that Italian have the experience. They don't have this data. Data is more important, like, uh, when they have a patient, they, all that, the technique, they have it, but Spain have more and more data because everybody was go there. But the Italians was working all over the place. The Italy, they work there. So we have good doctors. So about that, that team was in Italy. When we talked with them, actually, they was all come from the, the Spanish. The Instituto Bernabeu was one of the most specialized in endometriosis in Spain. Yeah. So more than lucky than this, it was perfect. Perfect. <laughs> so like was destiny that we found that after years that we was looking and we was thinking about a Republic Czech because for the cost, but then you we need to stay there. We almost went to the Czech Republic. We need to almost. stay too, because the price from Spain, Spain price is the most high price, like 10,000 euros, okay? Something like that, or 15. Starting, yeah. Oh, starting? Starting 10,000. Oh, okay, I was thinking most 10,000. I don't think so. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Well, I was thinking it was 10,000. Hey, Italy was 10,000 too, pretty much. So between the two, I was thinking, well, in Spain, you need a calculation okay, you stay two weeks. So it's much better to stay in Italy. But then when Italy came with the Instituto Bernabeu, Perfect. game changer. <laughs> we immediately saw it. I showed Alessio. We both just instantly were like, oh, we've got to schedule a consultation. And the consultation was amazing. So good. And uh, the process was amazing. So, Instituto Bernabeu, uh, maybe we're gonna write here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you're gonna, uh, Venice, so you're gonna, uh, if you wanna have consultation, you can go if you are from Italy or you, American, want to go in Europe because I know that a lot of Americans go all over the place because some places here cost you a lot, even 100k people spend. Yeah. So, People prefer maybe spend 20,000 or 10,000 plus to be in vacation. Like mm -hmm. if I go, I go in Italy and I have a vacation. Right. In the my circumstances, I close to my home, I need to drive one hour back and forth, no big deal. Yeah. Up and down. You stay with your family. Yeah. Easy. So easy, easy. And then I, we, go in Italy anyway to see my family. Right. So it was perfect. So now everybody have that uh, luxury for, because put uh, this big trip with like this, but right, right. yeah. And then if, if you see our videos, the IVF, we're gonna give you all where to buy the medicine, where to uh, go eat, where is in all that videos, we put some clips. I think egg retrieval, it was the pharmacy, the mm -hmm. clinic was right there with the medicine. So you have all good packets there. My recommendation is high to go there. I like, love that. Like, whew, I love them. Like, Maybe that's what I would do. The question that we answered, there's something we could scoop up from Italy and bring here. The, the clinic. clinic. <laughs> <laughs> the clinic. Yes, this is perfect. <laughs> I'm going to bring the clinic because... Uh, and we told them, this is amazing experience. And they say, thank you so much. And uh, they was appreciated for our feedback because probably non pe a lot of people don't give feedback. It's not They're like so here. They're so passionate too. They yeah. spend so much time like crafting their team. Cause it's not just the IVF doctor. You've got the embryologist, all the nurses, the midwives, the whole team. They work so hard and like really passionate to find the best people working there. So they're really impressive. I love that. We recommend I, them. I recommend them hundred times a day. Hundred times because they know that you're not gonna fall down with the team that they have, and uh, Dr. Essa and all the other team. It is amazing. 
I always think about them and just go, oh, they're so great. <laughs> yeah, and that was a little bit for us disappointed for the baby when we were talking about we're born the baby. Oh. I would like to see because they told us in the in the review, oh, I can uh, can wait to follow do, us, follow us to yeah. the at pregnancy. Oh, they're gonna follow us too. Uh, when I, because I was thinking, okay, you got the baby, pregnant, a finish, hard work finish. But they told us, oh, I can't wait to do the first uh, ultrasound. Ultrasound. We don't ask yes, question. We were so yeah. Them. We was shocked. We don't ask. Oh, because we have to. It is something in the program. Uh, so we don't ask nothing. But we were in shock until, like. Um, Oh, we don't know. Maybe we don't we'll know. go back for a couple other appointments. Uh, maybe um, one. Who knows? We'll Who knows? see. We'll see. We love them so much. We wish we could scoop them. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so many so. people asking about the microwave towel. <laughs> Why the microwave? Why, Why the, the microwave towel? towel? <laughs> go ahead. Answer the towel question. A lot of people know the answer to that question. But, okay. Why the towel? Because we hate the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Unless no. we're anti-microwave. No. It's all about the reflection about Jessie when she filmed me to, uh, to her a food trial. It, it's so distracting. If you're trying to watch Alessio and you see me like popping back and forth and the they And laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I filmed it once like that and I was editing it and I thought, this is terrible. We cannot put me back there. So now we always cover it. And up. I hate the microwave. <laughs> Alessio was happy to just not see it. If we could take it down and replace it with a like an oven hood, we would, but we just don't want to spend the money to do that. So no, it's we are, no, we have to know if one day we're gonna sell this house. Right. Because if we sell this house, we cut two hands for America because America want the microwave, want the microwave. <laughs> but if I say okay, this is my house, I gonna take the microwave, and throw it away. Actually, no, I not throw it away. I put it in different direction where he don't need to be. My right, side, like my right right close, there. <laughs> but not my close to the my stove. It's good because have the light. The only function is the light. I actually want to try and build one of those like little wooden covers to go in front of the microwave, so it blends in with the cabinets and it doesn't reflect me <laughs> in the background. <laughs> so that is the reason why. There you go. Cover. That's the big secret about the towel. Big secret, I guess. So reflective. <laughs> yeah. So are there any other differences that we've come across with Italy and the US as far as infertility, pregnancy, IVF, all these things? Well, one was the age, right? Like the difference, like now we were talking about the dottoressa. Oh, like the age of the mother. The mother, yeah. Yes. What did she told you? Because that was interesting. You was in shock. Okay, so let's go back a little bit here. So when we first started trying to conceive, I was 29. And it was right like when I was prepared, I had this whole plan. I'm gonna have my first baby at 29, I'm gonna wait three years and have my next one. I had it all planned out like many of us do. And then when it, that wasn't happening, <laughs> I started to get like the biological clock was ticking. I was thinking, oh gosh, I'm getting older, I'm getting older. And all of my friends started to have babies. And then some of them had two babies. So I started to think, oh my gosh, I'm like running out late. of time here. I'm running late. And then, uh, we were 30 or I was 31. We went to the doctor in Italy for the first time Just a regular gynecologist there for infertility and I was prepared to say look I know we've got to move 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 because that's what everybody here in the US have been telling me and He looked at my file and he was like, well, you know, like you're only 31. You're so young. You have so much time I really don't and he just kept talking like so casually about like, it. Yeah. Yeah, like we were both be so well, shocked. <laughs> wow, you were shocked. I was shocked. super shocked. I know I was that shocked because I come shocked here when a lot of people, especially in the South uh, United States, people married super young and they have children super young. When in Italy, at least North Italy, people are gonna probably not even married, but uh, Very have kids. Cultures. Kids at 35. You're waiting 35. If, if you say somebody at 26, when you plan to have children, they're laughing in the, your face in Italy. Like, oh, how about, what are you talking about? I'm so I young. I am a child. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a child. I cannot have babies at this point because they're looking from 
35. I know here in the United States, here, maybe New York. I want to say, clarify, you can have babies oh, whenever you want. But there is definitely a cultural difference in the mentality of, in the U.S., if you don't have a baby before you're in your 30s, you're behind. And in Italy, if you have one before your 30s, yeah. they're totally surprised. I honest, I was ready at 35. Right now, 37. So... Two years ago. You would have been 33 when we started. Yeah, I was 33. Yeah. Yeah, I am started 33. Where I am now. Yeah, <laughs> but in that moment was uh, from the endometriosis. Right. It came up like uh, all the circumstances like, oh, we need to do it or you're never going to do it. Mm -hmm. Because they told us you're never going to do it. So and then uh, for a lot of reasons, we know they the IVF that time. But everything came perfectly because if we did IVF in that time, who knows what was happening. And then mm -hmm. we wait that time, we researched and then came that clinic it all right works there. Out. Oh, you always put faith in the destiny and then something come. The destiny in the, you put faith in God or yeah. whatever. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then. It always works out the way it. I, I always think that it always works out the way it's meant to be. Yeah. Um, I do want to say one other thing about the age thing. Because I know when I was in the thick of the infertility struggles, like feeling the pressure of having a baby in my early 30s at that point, because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. And here they say when you're 35 or over, you're like ancient, you're geriatric pregnancy. There was so much pressure associated. So when we went to Italy and when we were even talking to your friends after that doctor's appointment... You had a friend who had just had our first baby at 34, one at 36, sometimes 40, and everybody was so casual about it. It was so refreshing. It took so much pressure off of me that I suddenly realized, oh my gosh, I'm not like on a timeline. No. I'm not late. I'm not running behind. I'm totally okay. And it just took so much anxiety away from me. So I've started to share that with other people who might also be feeling the pressures. Yeah. And so just know that there are other cultures that have a totally different mindset about it and obviously do what's best for you. But if you're feeling that anxiety of, oh my gosh, everybody I know had babies at this age and I'm, I can't, I'm having infertility. What's wrong with me? I'm going to have all these problems. Just relax. It's going to be okay. Take your time you and are, then don't worry. You, there's nothing wrong. Nothing. You have time. It's going to be okay. And that really helped me just relieve some of that anxiety. Yeah, that doctor phrase, they remove you and they... I'm, I remember you told me, just tell me I'm too young to have babies. <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, yeah, well, it's 31. I know our situation like from the fertility... We feel that we are late in the game because for all the doctors the in the US, they told us, <laughs> yes, because in Europe, they can make you pregnant even at 37. Here too. Here, here, here too. too, yes. Yes, too. But they're looking, they said, until 35 is a good age. And then you start to go down. It's like this drop off. Uh, yes. Her situation was like, Jesse, I have already three sur two surgeries. And they was worried about more the surgeries then mm -hmm. your age. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then when you when you did the IVF, they always say, oh, you're so young. So we was expecting a good reaction <laughs> like this. And, and then even right now, when we said, oh, guys, even if you got this wrong, you're so young, we're going to make work because we're going to then uh, figure out what is going wrong and then the chances are going to go higher and higher and higher. So yeah. they give you a lot of confidence. Like, yeah, uh, okay, it just, it just it made time. me feel so much more confident, like you said, less like a failure, mm -hmm. less like I was doing something wrong and just took so much pressure off. Yeah. I really appreciated that. Different mindset. It's just refreshing to see a different thought process yeah. on it. When you do have a baby, are you planning to raise them in the U.S.? The American way or in Italy, the Italian way. <laughs> I will say, no matter where we raise them, we want them to have a combination of both of our cultures and our languages. Hopefully, they will be multilingual. I think we need to talk to them really English. I'm gonna close my mouth. 
are you gonna speak with them in English? Because if I, I speak with them, they're gonna I'm gonna ruin their life with bad English. Bad grammar, you mean? Bad grammar. <laughs> well, I can't I'm speak gonna, to them in Italian then, because my grammar in Italian is terrible. I'm gonna do my gestures. <laughs> So you only answer them in Italian, I'll only answer them in English. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I, uh, I, that is my biggest fear because raise it. No, because uh, my mom was American. Right. Okay. And she talked to me in Italian because when you are in that situation, you speak the language where you're from. Okay. Punto. Yes, so she speaks that language in Italian. Not because she doesn't want to I learn English, because you are there. I notice that when I'm here with Jesse, I speak English. And I, sometimes I throw one Italian word here so just she can we learn. We speak in a weird combination. We are combination. Like three but, languages mixed together. But, but mo the majority most, English. Yes, English. So if uh, a kid was born in the United States, in my opinion, I was uh, make him like an American. Oh, they're speaking Italian too over there. They're gonna speak Italian. Okay. I'm gonna teach one, <laughs> like, two... We're gonna have a problem. Okay, <laughs> they're gonna speak Italian too, of course, but I'm gonna try to teach the thing. Mm -hmm. But race kind of like American because they need to prepare to America if they live Italian. here. <laughs> we gotta train them to be Americans. <laughs> I I see what you're saying. I, I really you know, I agree. Huh? No, it's just that I think there's so many good things about both cultures that I want to try and infuse them with the best of both. The, the cooking is gonna be Italian. I was <laughs> I was thinking like uh, like what would you like? What is your an example of this? To uh, to be we are in the south here. A lot of people are polite, and I don't like the in Italians they are not polite like here. Oh, um, people are going to disagree with you on that because Italy is known for being so no. polite and generous. Listen, <laughs> don't talk to Italian and say that Italians are polite because all the Italian immigration Italians like me, when I go out and then I go back in Italy, I, at least in the south of the United States, when I go back down and I see this Italian and they, <laughs> and they, and they make me go crazy and tell, my blood go back Italian say <laughs> where we are. Oh. That's true. Here in the south in Tennessee, you walk down the street and everyone's like, hi, so, how are you? you? The, the, people, the people when they say, oh, the Americans are not polite. Wait, the Americans are polite. The Italians are polite. Yes, when it's guest. If you bang there like a guest, so you cannot polite. beat Italians, okay? Because the guest, it is the guest, okay? But if you have a normal person Italian living in Italy, you need to fight with everybody every day for have everything. I if I go to the saying, post yeah. office, I need to fight for my papers. If I need to go to the car rental, I need to fight the car rental. Uh, I remember okay, when we were in the interstate, you know, I paid the ticket not to the guy mm -hmm. and I say, good morning, how are you, you today? <laughs> the guy told me, guys, you need to reproduce yourself. Because it's, I, the first guy said good morning to him. Told me good morning today. Uh, you need to make a lot of babies. I want everybody like you because you are the first one. And you know what? I noticed me too. So I Fair. believe that in America have a lot of principles. Then it is a lot of craziness, but. I believe it's a lot of good principles in America. So then, that's why we need to take the good from both. Yes. Like in Italian, an appreciation for food, yes. history, um, you know, finding time to enjoy the little things, slowing down, but also having a good work ethic. It has to be a combination. Yeah. We're going to create this nice combination of... Yes, this. yes, yes, yes. But I think when uh, a kid is born polite, you make everything else because a kid polite one on one learn history uh, That's gonna true. be <laughs> yes it, it gonna be nice thing but you're Italian you were born in Italy and you're polite I'm not polite <laughs> because I tell everybody how not good is the food here with no polite <laughs> manners true, I true. tell this is okay like 
terrible. Let's say terrible. This is terrible. Meanwhile, I'm over here like, and like mm, so most people good. say, oh, this is good. No, <laughs> I honest, this is not good. Okay, so the Italian way is coming out for not to be polite. <laughs> this is so terrible. Wait, well, how are we raising these kids? Because I feel confused now. Don't worry, with my cookie, it's gonna be all the sake is good. Okay. I tell you, polite wait, is wait, the we answer. I forgot the whole point of the question where we're gonna raise them. Probably right, in America. The US. America. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay, that was the Okay, that was in the, the US, question. In America. With a combination of cultural and linguistic. Then, if they want to do my back, like, because it's weird, my life. Because my grandparents come here and my mom born here and they go back to US. No, to back to Italy. Married Italian and stay there. The son come in US. Married American, stay, ma there. stay here. Make a baby. The baby go in Italy. Married Italian, stay there. Stay there. Oh my God. I'm gonna accept it. We're gonna, it's gonna, generation by generation, we're gonna hop back and forth yeah. <laughs> between the two. Oh I'm gosh. gonna, I'm gonna accept that. Well, that yeah. means our grandkids will be back here in the U.S. so we can miss that. <laughs> they will go retire in Italy, then it will mess it up again. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for uh, stay with us. Drop some questions if you like. We try to bring the doctor for more yes. question IVF actually. IVF yes. endometriosis related yeah. questions. So, until to the next. Ciao.